Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, in this video I am going to talk about the topic isoenzymes. Isoenzymes are also known as isozymes. So basically I will cover this topic under the following headings, first the introduction of isoenzymes, then followed by different ways of isoenzyme formation, then identification of different isoenzymes, how to identify and finally some examples where it will give us a significance of different isoenzymes in clinical enzymology. So, from big in the beginning, we will see the introduction. So, introduction we are talking about isoenzymes. When we talk about isoenzyme, we should have a good knowledge of enzymes first. The enzymes are basically proteins are nature. They are proteinous means the basic components are the amino acids and all enzymes are required basically for a reaction and they catalyze the reaction. So, they accelerate the reaction. In our body, most of the reactions require the enzyme. So, the enzymes act as biocatalyst in our body. So, if a reaction happens, A reacts with B producing C and that requires one enzyme X. The meaning is that the X is the enzyme which accelerates, accelerates the reaction A plus B forming C. Now, what is these isoenzymes? If you look at the definition of isoenzyme, isoenzymes or isozymes are the physically distinct forms of an enzyme, but catalyze the same reaction. That means, if X is the enzyme and X has three isoenzymes, for example, X1, X2 and X3, all the three that is X1 or X2 or X3, all three the all three isoenzymes, they will basically catalyze the same reaction A plus B forming C. That is the meaning of the isoenzyme. This, they are basically different forms of the same enzyme and they are catalyzing the same chemical reaction. But how they are different? They differ from each other structurally because the protein content or we can say the amino acid content is different. Some contain more charged amino acid, for example, more minus charge or more plus charged amino acid. And they basically, because of that charge difference, they differ from each other electrophoretically. So, in the electrophoresis, if you do the technique of electrophoresis for different isoenzyme, the movement of isoenzyme will be different. They will move in a different, uh, move different distances because of the different charge content. Now, coming to the Km value, the Km value of the isoenzymes will be different because each isoenzyme is one enzyme and all enzymes has a separate Km value. So, isoenzyme are different forms, so they will be having different Km values. Now, coming to the next part that is the susceptibility to inhibitor. See, some isoenzyme of a particular enzyme may be inhibited by a particular drug or a chemical. So, that inhibitor basically inhibits that particular isoenzyme, but did, does not inhibit, inhibit the other isoenzymes. Now, coming to the degree of denaturation, what is the meaning of that? Because it the isoenzymes are proteins, when the heat is applied, the proteins normally get denatured. But if you look at the isoenzymes, they are different chemical uh, forms of the enzyme or uh, different physical forms of the enzyme. So, when different amount of temperature is used or same temperature also, some enzyme will be stable. At the same temperature, other isoenzyme may not be stable. So, isoenzymes one particular isoenzyme may be stable at a particular temperature, whereas other isoenzyme may not be stable at the same temperature. Now, coming to the example, uh, the LDH that is lactate dehydrogenase has five distinct forms of the isoenzyme, whereas the CK that is creatine kinase has the three distinct forms of isoenzymes. We will see in detail about LDH and CK in the coming slides. Now, coming to the different ways of formation of isoenzyme how these isoenzymes are formed differently. In the beginning, I told you isoenzymes are basically different forms of enzyme and they are proteinous in nature. 
we should know from the uh, molecular biology, the central dogma says that DNA forms mRNA by the process of transcription and mRNA changes into protein by the process of translation. So, these enzymes which are basically proteinous in nature are coming from DNA. So, DNA means they are coming from the gene or the chromosome. So, the first way of formation of these isoenzyme is they may be product of different gene that means more than one locus is involved of the different chromosomes. So, these isoenzyme may be produced from different gene of different chromosome. So, more than one locus of the gene is used to synthesize or form different protein or different isoenzyme. The example is salivary and pancreatic amylase. If you look at the amylase, the both are amylases, but one is salivary amylase, other one is pancreatic amylase and they are synthesized from different gene and different locus of different chromosome. Coming to the second way of formation, there may be a possibility where same locus of the gene is used, but with different allele. So, different alleles are used to synthesize different isoforms or isoenzymes. So, these are the allylic isoenzymes which are also known as allogymes. Now, coming to the example, if you look at the G6PD that is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, it has 400 distinct forms of isoenzyme or isoforms of the same enzyme G6PD. Coming to the third type, the post translational modification of isoenzyme leads to different isoform. What is the meaning of that? See, post translation, once the translation happen from mRNA to protein, that is the protein, it is not the mature protein always. Sometimes, some changes happens to this particular protein, some addition will happen, sometimes some deletion happens. One example is the addition of sialic acid to ALP. ALP is alkaline phosphatase. So, sialic acid contained that means sialic acid is added to the protein to form different isoenzyme. That content is different in different isoenzymes. Now, coming to the identification of isoenzyme, that is the separation, how to how to know which is the uh, which is what particular isoenzyme. The first one is by electrophoresis. So, I told you in the beginning, these are different forms. So, different proteins are involved. That means, different amino acids are there. Some may have more charged amino acid, for example, negative charged amino acid. Some will have more of positive charged amino acid. One example, if we see, it will become clear. If you look at the LDH, in the, in the example of isoenzyme I told you, LDH that is lactate dehydrogenase has 5 different isoenzymes. It has LDH1, LDH2, LDH3, LDH4 and LDH5. When the electrophoresis is done for all the 5 isoenzyme to separate them, what happens? If this is the negative charged end and this is the positive end that is the anode and this is the cathode, the isoenzyme point of application is done here, then the, the electricity is passed. So, based on the charge, these isoenzymes move. If you look at the distance moved, the maximum distance is moved by LDH1 followed by LDH2, then LDH3, then LDH4 and finally LDH5 which remains almost at the point of application. Why happens? it happens like that? Because the LDH5 is having less number of negative charge. If it has more negative charge, it will move towards the move towards the cath anode that is the positive end. So, LDH1 that implies that LDH1 isoenzyme has maximum amount of negatively charged amino acid which separates it from other amino acid. The distance moving moved by LDH1 is the maximum. Now, coming to the second uh, thing which can identify different isoenzyme is the tissue location. Some of the isoenzymes are located in one particular tissue, others will be found in other tissues. Like for example, ALP, one of the isoenzyme is found in bone, whereas other isoenzymes are found in placenta and the liver. So, different isoenzyme 
may be present in different tissue locations. Now coming to the heat stability, same example I will take for ALP. See one isoenzyme may be stable at a particular temperature. For example, LDH will be very stable at 60 degree, one particular LDH will be very stable whereas another isoenzyme of LDH will not be stable at the same temperature. So different isoenzyme are stable and some may be not stable, they may be denatured at the same particular uh, temperature. Now coming to the KM value, in the beginning I told you already, the KM value are different because isoenzymes are different forms of the enzyme. So different isoenzyme, different KM value. One example we can see hexokinase enzyme which converts the glucose to glucose 6-phosphate has 4 isoenzymes. If you look at the KM values of all the 4 hexokinases, the hexokinase 4 has the maximum KM value as compared to the other uh, hexokinase 1, 2 and 3. Now coming to the coenzyme requirement, the isoenzymes, different isoenzymes may require different coenzyme. One example we can see that uh, the isocitrate dehydrogenase is present in mitochondria also uh, as well as it is present in the cytosol. The mitochondrial isocitrate dehydrogenase requires NAD plus as the coenzyme whereas the cytosolic isocitrate dehydrogenase requires the NADP plus as the coenzyme. So coenzyme requirement may be different for different isoenzymes. Coming to the other identification uh, things for the specific antibody one particular antibody can be used to basically um, identify a particular isoenzyme. Uh, one uh, example we can see the CK, the creatine kinase has three isoenzyme. All the three isoenzymes or of CK are separated using antibodies, different antibodies. And finally, the inhibitors. I told you already inhibitors, one particular chemical or one particular drug may inhibit a particular type of isoenzyme. That happens for LDH5. LDH5 has 5 isoenzymes but L, uh, sorry LDH, LDH has 5 isoenzyme 1, 2, 5 but the LDH5 is inhibited by urea. Others are not inhibited. So that can basically identify LDH5. You, if you use urea that can identify the LDH5 by inhibiting it. Now coming to the examples, uh, the example of isoenzyme we will see where which are basically helpful in clinical enzymology. I will talk about three examples. First one is LDH that is lactate dehydrogenase followed by CK creatine kinase and finally ALP the alkaline phosphatase. First we will see about the LDH that is lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, if you look at the LDH lactate dehydrogenase, lactate dehydrogenase isoenzyme basically it is a tetramer. What is the meaning of tetramer? That means it contains 4 subunits, 4 polypeptide subunits. But all these 4 polypeptide sub subunit are made up of 2 different type of subunit that is the H and M. The H stands for heart and M stands for muscle. If you look at the how to then by using 2 subunit how to synthesize a tetramer. That means you have to use either 2H or 2M or all H or all M. We will see that in the coming uh, table. See LDH1 will be, uh, will be basically having 4 subunits of H, so it is H4. LDH2 is H3, that means 3 subunits of H and 1 subunit of M. LDH3 is H2 and M2, 2H and 2M subunits. Basically these subunits are proteins, you have to keep it that in mind, they are basically polypeptide chains. Now LDH4 is 1H and 3M polypeptide subunit and LDH5 is all 4M. Now electrophoretic mobility we had already seen that LDH1 moves maximum distance whereas LDH5 moves the minimum distance and the uh, activity of these particular isoenzymes at 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes if you see LDH1 and LDH2 are not at all destroyed by 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes but LDH4 and LDH5 are completely destroyed because of 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes whereas LDH3 is partially destroyed. That means it is destroyed but partially destroyed because of 60 degrees Celsius. So all the isoenzymes are different in their heat stability. Now coming to the origin tissue that means from which tissue they are originated basically. 
The LDH1 and LDH2 are predominantly present in the heart and erythrocyte. LDH4 and LDH5 are mainly present in skeletal muscle and liver, whereas LDH3 is present in the brain. And coming to the amount of or percentage of these isoenzymes in the blood, the maximum amount is present from LDH2 that is 35 percent and minimum is LDH5 that is 5 percent. And if you look at the LDH1, it is 30 percent, very close to LDH2. So, in a normal healthy individual, the LDH2 level will be more than LDH1 because it is 35 percent and the LDH, LDH2 is 35 percent, LDH1 is 30 percent. But when you see in case of MI, that is heart attack happens after 24 hours of heart attack or infarction, MI, MI is myocardial infarction, after 25, 24 hours of MI, the LDH1 level will be more than LDH2, a flip pattern is seen. Why? By up, because once the heart attack happens, the LDH1 level starts increasing. At the 12 hour level, the level of LDH1 and LDH2 will be almost equal, but after 24 hours, the value of LDH1 will be more than LDH2. So, 24 hours it takes to in get a higher value as compared to LDH2. So, it becomes a flipped pattern. And if you see the maximum amount of LDH1 is attained at around 2 to 3 days after the myocardial infarction and then it comes down by 5th or 6th day. Now, increased level of LDH5 and LDH4 both are seen in case of liver disease because both the isoenzymes are located in liver. So, mainly the both, both of them are increasing means that uh, says that it is, it is a liver disease and all the isoenzymes of LDH that is total LDH. When I say total LDH, total CK that means the all the isoenzymes are increased. So, total LDH means all the isoenzyme is increased in case of malignancy. Now, coming to the second example creatine kinase CK. So, we saw LDH that was a tetramer but CK creatine kinase is a dimer and dimer means it has two polypeptide subunit and both are B and M. B stands for brain and M stands for muscle. So, if you look at the uh, isoenzyme CK1 consists of two subunit that is both are BB, BB subunit CK2 is MB and CK3 is MM. And if you look at the origin of the tissue where, from where they are getting synthesized, BB is mainly present in the brain, MM is present in the skeletal muscle, whereas MB is present mostly in the heart muscles. So, if by chance anything happens to the heart, the MB component that is a CK2 or CKMB commonly known as CKMB that is increased. So, if you look at the clinically how they are important, the estimation of total CK is done in case of muscular dystrophy. If there is a muscular dystrophy, then estimation of total CK that means CK1, CK2 and CK3 all three are increased. So, that is why the total CK is done in case of muscular dystrophy, but in case of MI that is heart attack only the CKMB isoenzyme is estimated because only CKMB is present in heart. Now, coming to the uh, when it is increased, see CK we saw LDH1 that starts increasing after 12 hours becomes equal to LDH2 and by 2 to 3 days it reaches the peak, but in case of CKMB the increase starts after 4 hours of MI and maximum value the peak of CKMB is reached at, our, at around 24 hours and then rapidly it comes down. Coming to the last example that is alkaline phosphatase ALP. ALP if you see ALP can be separated by two different methods, one is electrophoresis and other one is heat. So, both the methods are used to separate them because they are different in that particular characteristic feature. Now, if you look at the uh, electrophoresis method, the electrophoresis separates basically six different types of ALP. If you use the process of electrophoresis on ALP, six types of ALP are produced or you can see six, six different types out of which five are very crucial or important from the clinical point of view. So, those five are first one is alpha 1 ALP which is present in biliary canaliculi. If you look at the origin of the alpha 1 ALP, it is in the biliary canaliculi and it moves the maximum distance in electrophoresis. 
So, because it is present in the biliary canaliculi, if anything happens in the biliary canaliculi, then it may lead to increase of alpha 1 ALP and that happens in case of obstructive jaundice as well as hepatobiliary disease. Now, coming to the second type that is alpha 2 heat labile ALP, what is, what is the meaning of labile? Labile means it is destroyed. So, it, it is not very uh, stable at that particular heat. So, it is, it is heat sensitive or he, it is destroyed at the particular heat. So, heat labile. So, alpha 2 ALP is present in the hepatic cells. So, any kind of cancer of the liver that leads to increase of alpha 2 ALP which is heat labile. Now, same alpha 2 ALP one more variety is there one more isoenzyme is there which is heat stable. So, if you give that particular same heat this particular isoenzyme will not be destroyed at the same particular heat. So, that is why it is heat stable and this isoenzyme is present in the placenta and this particular isoenzyme alpha 2 heat stable ALP is increased in case of carcinoma of lung, colon as well as the ovary. Now, the fourth isoenzyme which is important from the clinical point of view is the pre beta ALP. It is a heat labile ALP. So, it labile means it is also getting destroyed because of particular heat and it is present in the bone. So, any bone diseases will increase the pre beta ALP. Particularly, Paget's disease, if you see this particular isoenzyme is very, essen uh, very essential to uh, ident identify the Paget's disease. Now, finally, the gamma ALP. Gamma LP is present mainly in the intestine and it is a isoenzyme which moves the lowest slowest and that means it will be not it will not be moving much in the electrophoresis and normally the value will be increased because of the colitis ulcerative colitis. So, these are the different isoenzymes of LP. Now, coming to the conclusion I want to conclude by saying that the isoenzymes are basically different forms or multi forms of the same enzyme catalyzing the same reaction, but they are different in different characteristic features like electrophoresis will be different, structure will be different, their KM value will be different, their uh, sensitivity to the heat will be different and they may be getting identified by different antibodies. But if you look at the um, importance or significance of these isoenzymes, the importance is they help us to identify very important uh, diseases and they play a very major role to identify some very important diseases. So, thank you.